What's up guys, it's Justin here and today I'm bringing you guys a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5S. You may have seen me compare the S4 with the iPhone 5 earlier this year, however this time we are back with Apple's newest flagship for 2013 that features quite a few internal improvements, a few additional features, as well as a newly redesigned iOS 7 software. Without further ado, let's get right into it and the first thing we're going to talk about is the hardware. The iPhone 5S for the most part is the same as the iPhone 5 on the outside. You may notice some differences in the home button that now has a touch ID sensor built in and around the camera there are some small differences there as well but the overall form factor and feel is the same as the predecessor. On the other hand the Samsung Galaxy S4 you'll be able to tell right away is a much larger phone. The screen size on the S4 comes in at 4.99 inches while the iPhone comes in at just 4 inches. But when you weigh these up, the iPhone comes in at 112 grams and the S4 comes in at 130. However, since the S4 is a much larger phone when you're holding on it, it actually does feel a little bit lighter. On the S4, you've also got a standard micro USB for charging and syncing, while on the iPhone 5S, you've got the proprietary Apple Lightning Dock Connector. And on the front, you've also got the speaker in, as well as the front facing camera and a proximity light sensor on the 5S. And on the S4, you've got quite a bit of different sensors that I'm going to go into later in the video, as well as your speaker there as well. The 5S comes in 1632 or 64GB configurations that is not expandable, while the S4 has a 1632 and 64GB as well. However, you can expand it via micro USB up to 64GB. One thing to note is that the OS and the built-in apps from TouchWiz on the Samsung Galaxy S4 do take up quite a bit of space. A 16GB version only left me with 9GB of usable storage, while a 32GB iPhone 5S left me with 28GB of storage, so you might want to keep that in mind while you're purchasing. You also have your volume rockers on the sides, and on the bottom you also got these speakers for playing music, videos, etc, of course. And on the iPhone 5S, they're located on the bottom, which I guess is okay. They do play very nicely, and there really isn't anything to complain about. However, on the Samsung Galaxy S4, they're located on the back, which I found very, very easy to cover up by accident, or if you're resting it on a table. And I really wasn't impressed of the Samsung Galaxy S4, but of course, you guys all know the HTC One still has by far the best speakers out of anything. Flipping them over to the back, you can see that the iPhone 5S is made out of a very nice premium material. It is available in a space gray that I've got here, champagne as well as silver, while the Samsung Galaxy S4 is available in white and black, as well as some exclusive colors depending on your carrier. And the S4 is made out of plastic and it has a removable panel on the back which some people may like. Onto the display, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a screen nearly 1 inch larger than the iPhone 5S. The screen comes in at 4.99 inches, has a 1920 by 1080 resolution, and comes in at a 441 ppi pixel density. The iPhone 5S on the other hand has the same display as before, a 4 inch 1136 by 640 326 ppi display, and both of them you really can't notice any of the pixels, they're very hard to see the pixels, they're extremely clear and crisp, but where I notice a difference is that the S4 screen is just so much more vibrant and it jumps out to you while the iPhone 5S gives you more of an accurate representation of a color. But for those who like that jump factor, it, the screen of the S4 is absolutely beautiful and it totally just jumps out to you but some people may not want such a big screen. So it really comes down to personal preference there. Likely where you'll see the biggest difference between these two phones is the software, which is what most people talk about when comparing different phones between the iPhone. Of course, the iPhone runs the newly revamped iOS 7 that is redesigned. You can see there's also the fingerprint sensor there with the iPhone 5S. So just showing you guys how that works. And the new lock screen, everything looks very flat, clean. There's also the control center. And many people will say that Apple may have taken a lot of features from Android that had been there before. But I guess it doesn't really matter as in the end who is going to be benefiting that is us the consumer so i guess it's fine that they have kind of taken or transferred over many different features as it just gives us a better experience with the new multitasking the control center just makes everything look so much easier and it does take some getting used to as the ios 7 and its flat interface may look a little bit strange at first but now that all the apps are transitioning into a flat logo to match with the ios 7 i do think that it looks very very nice they have done a huge improvement to this compared to the iOS 6 that has been overall very stale and unchanged since 2007 when it was first introduced. And there you can see the camera app also has some changes as well. 
And they have also added some live filters in there, though not many. And I will show you the app on the Samsung Galaxy S4, which has almost every feature you can imagine. And also the iPhone 5S has a slow-mo video, which is not available on other iOS devices except for the iPhone 5S, which I actually found pretty cool as well. Going over to the Samsung Galaxy S4, it runs Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean with the TouchWiz skin from Samsung, of course, which has many different applications and new features that they have integrated into Android. Of course, there is also the stock version that you can purchase, but this is the version that has TouchWiz built into it. You can see there's all the settings and management on the top, it makes it very easy to access. Your notifications are also integrated there, and TouchWiz does bring quite a few new features utilizing the sensors of the S4, but it is really up to you whether you like it or not. You can also use different launchers which is really really cool. It gives you the sense of customizability and like you know with Android it gives you so much more customizability as opposed to iPhone even at iOS 7. There's your task manager, you can close off the RAM, and you also have very easy access to Google Now. But taking a look at iOS 7, there is the task manager. You could say it is a little bit like what is seen on Android with the cards, and I do think it is a good improvement from what was on iOS 6 and previous versions. So there, let's just go. You've also got the app drawer with all your applications. Personally, I'm pretty used to using iOS 7 and iOS with all the apps being laid out there, but I guess a lot of people do want a good level of customizability, and Android has the most customizability compared to iOS. So if that's what you're looking for, the Samsung Galaxy S4 or any other Android phone would probably be your option to go with. So here's a look at your app drawer, of course. All your apps are located there. You can also add widgets to the home screen of Android devices to have, again, a customized look to it. And taking a look at the camera application, Samsung, especially with the TouchWiz camera app, has so many different functions and different modes you can see there. It gives you a whole bunch of versatility as well. You can adjust your exposure, your white balance if you wanted to. But to conclude, in terms of the software, the Android interface may be intimidating for some, but for others who want the level of customizability will really enjoy it. So now let's actually take a look and see how these phones stack up against each other in terms of the benchmarks and the overall hardware that is put into these phones. One of the biggest changes to the iPhone 5S is a new A7 processor, still dual core with 1 gig of RAM, while the Samsung Galaxy S4 version I've got here is the GT i9500 that has the Exynos 5 Octa 5410 processor. That is an 8 core processor, total clocked in at 1.6 gigahertz. So this is actually a little bit more powerful than the US version I'd say but in terms of overall performance and the real life performance you won't notice much of a difference between this S4 and the Snapdragon 600 S4 that a lot of you do have. So now the benchmark is done, I gotta say I was very surprised when somebody first told me the iPhone 5S beat out the Samsung Galaxy S4 in terms of the benchmarks. You can see there that the single core performance on the Samsung Galaxy S4, like I said this is the octa-core version, came in at 810 and the iPhone 5S almost doubled that with a 1411. And even with the multi-core performance, the iPhone 5S did edge the Samsung Galaxy S4, so I'm actually very surprised by that, and that could be thanks to the 64-bit architecture that is the first seen on any mobile phone so I think Apple did actually do a significant bump on the iPhone 5s as opposed to its predecessor the iPhone 5. Though all the power on the iPhone 5s when you're just running everyday tasks I gotta say I didn't notice really any difference between the iPhone 5 and the 5s but the best way to test that out and see its capabilities is using 3d mark as that will tell you how it performs during gaming and what capability it has you may know that the iPhone 5s and its additional processing power will really benefit to games that are out right now and even the ones that are coming out that will take advantage of that so let's just speed up to the end here and take a look at these scores so there we go the benchmark is done, the Samsung Galaxy S4 comes out with a score of nearly 9,000, just around the 8,700 mark there, and the iPhone 5S comes out of a score of over 14,000, and the S4's 9,000 score is already very impressive, but I'm just absolutely amazed by how much the iPhone 5S's speed is, but both these phones in terms of everyday performance and general work, it really wouldn't see any difference unless you're going to be running very intensive games that could be coming out in the future. So now we're going to check out the default browser 
browsers built into both of these devices. Of course, it's Safari on the iPhone 5S, and it is the Samsung web browser on the Samsung Galaxy S4. And we're going to be using SunSpider, which is a JavaScript test that kind of sees how it loads the pages, etc. So let's just skip to the end once again. So the final score of the iPhone 5S came out at 400 milliseconds, while the Samsung Galaxy S4 came out at nearly 800 milliseconds. And I got to say, the S4 score is still very, very good, but the iPhone 5S and its power has just really surprised me thus far. But one thing that is a little bit different is that the Samsung Galaxy S4 has 802.11ac support while the iPhone 5S has 802.11n. But when I ran speed tests on both these devices, the speed came out almost exactly the same on both of them. So I'm guessing that there really isn't a benefit right now with the AC, but it just makes it a little bit more future proof. Smartphone cameras these days gotta be very good, as people like to use them to take photos everywhere they go, as a smartphone is something that you always carry with you, so it's really handy you just take it out of your pocket and snap photos. The iPhone 5S did get a little bit of an upgrade in terms of the camera, though it still sees at 8 megapixels, the sensor size has been increased by 15%, letting more light in. It is now f2.2, and they have also changed up the flash to have an amber and white light to get you some better low light photos. In terms of the iOS 7 interface for the camera app, you now have live filters, you still got your photo mode, your video mode, you also have square photo mode, which I find myself using a lot. There's also panorama, of course, and also slow motion video, which I found very cool. On the Samsung Galaxy S4, like I said, you do have a ton of different features and modes that you could pick from. You've got beauty face, best photo, sound and shot, drama, all that just to name a few. There's just so many things you can do in terms of the camera, though it does not have the slow motion mode that the 5S has. But I guess you could probably find something that you like out of that. And there's also the snapshot, the photo and photo mode, which is pretty cool there as well. You could have a lot of versatility if you wanted it. You set the ISO, the white balance, the video size, um, stabilization, etc. tagging. There's just so much more customizability while the iPhone 5S is meant to be just take out and shoot with it. So I pretty much just stacked the phones one over another and you can see that the iPhone 5S does take a little bit of a wider shot which is pretty good and the main issue I noticed with the S4 and its 13 megapixel camera is under bright light there seems to be a little bit of a purple hue in some of the images but in terms of capturing details the 13 megapixel camera definitely did an amazing job. What I noticed in the images is that the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a little bit of a exaggerated look to it. Some people really like that, very vibrant colors. They really pop out to you just like the display on the S4. So I really think it does come down to personal preference and what style of photos you want it to take. Personally, I'm very used to the iPhone 5S as the 5 was my everyday phone for a while. But when you look at the video, I gotta say both of them did a very good job. The color tone is a little bit different on both of them. I wouldn't say one is a little bit better than the other. It comes down to personal preference. I think that the Samsung Galaxy S4 did record a little bit of a brighter image to it. And there is touch of focus on both these, but on the iPhone 5S, you do also have a three times digital zoom while you're recording as well. So there you can see the colors between them are just a little bit different. I'd say in video mode, the S4 is a little bit more vibrant but it really comes down to what you think and you judge for yourself with the raw footage. When it comes to the front, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a 1.9 megapixel front facing camera while the iPhone 5S has a 1.2 megapixel camera. So look at the front facing camera photos, you can see that the S4 takes a much wider image, which is really good. And the iPhone 5S does a little, have a little bit of a brighter image and the shirt color is actually a little bit more accurate, but I think the S4 does take a wider image, which a lot of times is very helpful. One major factor with smartphones these days is the battery life. The iPhone 5S claims to have a 10% increase in terms of the battery to give you around 10 hours of usage, and it's said to have a 1650 milliamp hour battery, while the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a 2600 milliamp hour battery, but I found that from regular usage, they lasted around the same time. One thing I also noticed is that the iPhone 5S kind of, the battery doesn't last as long, but the Samsung Galaxy S4 can or has the capability to lose power faster. I also find that the iPhone 5S charges much faster, while the S4 for some reason takes quite a bit of while to charge. Even though the battery size is larger, it seems to have taken longer for the same amount of charge. But in general, I can say that both of these phones don't have any issues in terms of battery drainage, and you should have no problem using them. 
So let's talk about some of the sensors and additional features on both of these phones. The iPhone 5s of course has its proximity sensor on the front, there's also an accelerometer and on the 5s they also introduced an M7 coprocessor that fitness applications and motion applications can take advantage of. You've also got a digital compass, a fingerprint identifier on the front which is really really cool. You've also got a GPS of course and a gyroscope. On the Samsung Galaxy S4, on the other hand, it is absolutely loaded with sensors. You've got an accelerometer, a barometer, a digital compass, a gyroscope, a GPS, humidity, and a thermometer. And although you may not know what some of these are used for or if they're going to be used, it allows some applications to take advantage of that. For example, the S Health that Samsung has tried to push through. There's also an IR blaster at the top that allows you to control your TV with that. But taking a look at the health application, it allows you to set your mood or predict your mood based on your surrounding temperature and humidity so I guess it's a little bit handy there. But that's about it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the Apple iPhone 5S. Of course when the S5 comes out I'll once again be comparing it with the iPhone 5S. Be sure to hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video and leave your comments right below as I would love to hear what you guys think. But aside from that be sure to check out all my other content, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.